Welcome to All in Yellow. The official Norwich City podcast. Section of the game. Branchier! Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the All In Yellow podcast. Today's guest is a man whose ability to win games with moments of magic over the past four seasons has made him a real fan favourite at Carrot Road. It's Norwich City Bosnian baller Mario Vrancic. Mario, so good to have you on the podcast today. Firstly, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, Sorry, (laughs) very well, thank you. Um, Yeah, my last day is in Norwich, so a bit exciting. Yeah, need to the sort end out of the a few things. Well, obviously, you know your your time coming to an end at the end of the season, but two promotions in three seasons. You leave as a champion. It couldn't have ended any better, could it? Yeah, how do you say it's always uh, to leave at its best? So yeah, very proud of the things I've achieved, and yeah, the perfect timing. What? Why the perfect timing? Um, as I say, it's it's much nicer to leave to leave such a special place um, on its best. I mean, uh, we achieved everything we could have imagined. And so, yeah, I had great four years. And as I say, um, it's best uh, to leave on the on the top level. Yeah, there must be so many emotions for you at the minute, because obviously you sealed the championship on Saturday, promotion up to the Premier League. But have you had time to kind of process all of that? Or are you already thinking ahead to your next step after Norwich? Uh, no, um, I'm not thinking about the next step. Obviously, I've, I've been trying to enjoy um, my my last days, my last weeks, and um, so yeah. But I think as as um, as soon as I obviously move and yeah, leave my apartment and everything, leave the club, say farewell to everyone, it will be kind of emotional, yeah. Yeah, I bet it doesn't feel real yet. But what were the celebrations like for for going up to the Premier League again and as champions once more? Yeah, it's it's strange. It's um, it was like more or less we <laughs> celebrated all three four days because obviously we got promoted and then champions. It was always something, and yeah, it got it got bit got a bit wild. Uh, but at the end, yeah, we enjoyed it. It was fun, and yeah, unfortunately we couldn't share it with the with the supporters, which obviously is yeah, much much nicer. But between us, it was it was amazing. Yeah, you talk about the fans there. What's it been like this season playing without them? I guess I don't know whether you knew this would be your last season, but it must have felt very different for you. Yeah, I mean, happily, we had a few games, uh, I think, in October or November when we when we had a few supporters. Um, yeah, it's it's very unfortunate for us, but uh, also for the supporters that, they, yeah, that we couldn't uh, share the moment together. I mean, uh, this is what... Uh, football is about what life is about. The people love us, we love them, and um, yeah, it was a bit strange. Um, but yeah, it is how it is. We we can't change it, and um, I hope we we made the fans proud and happy. The good thing is though, you are of course on social media, so you've got that connection with fans. What has the response been to this being announced that this is your final season at Norwich? Um, yeah, really um, amazing, amazing uh, messages. All the all the support I got, the the whole appreciation um, from the supporters uh, means a lot to me. And yeah, really very nice and kind messages. And yeah, obviously, as I said, I couldn't say goodbye or farewell to the supporters um, in person. Um, yeah, so social media it is, right? What would your message be to them right now? Um, yeah, I just can can say thank you. I was always, um, yeah, there was a warm welcome from from day one. Always, always support, and um, I kind of, I hopefully paid it back uh, with a few few goals. Um, yeah, especially when they were here, we we enjoyed it. We had a good time, and yeah, it's it's not a it's not a farewell. It's probably a see you later. <laughs> Oh, I love that. And yeah, you say you, you did score some spectacular goals, free kicks in particular. What's your favourite goal and favourite memory? Um, yeah, it's hard to pick one. Um, but if I really need to, cho- to choose one, um, I would go for the, for the game uh, at, at uh, Ellen Road at Leeds, which was, um, yeah, I know it was away, but uh, I think the, the, the stadium was full. It was an important game. We, we smashed Leeds and it was one of the best games I've played. I think the whole team was amazing with the supporters, a massive game. And I would pick, I would pick this, this game. 
Oh, interesting. And that 97th minute equaliser against Sheffield Wednesday at Carroll Road, that's got to be up there, surely, too? <laughs> yeah, it is up there. But um, I mean, I think I got I got on the on the pitch only in the 82nd minute or something. So I just played like, what, 50 minutes. <laughs> of course, I scored this uh, important goal. But uh, I think at Leeds, it was a more important game because obviously Leeds was, uh, I think, three points clear to us. And yeah, massive game, load, uh, loads of pressure and... Um, yeah, as I said, if I need to pick one, I would go for Leeds. Love that. So, so some very special memories. What about Norwich as a place? Did you know much about Norwich before you came and, and how did you settle in? Um, no, I didn't know a lot. Obviously, um, we had we had some, um, yeah, some, some um, how do you say, um, some talks, some chats with Stuart Weber and, and the club. And uh, from, but from day one, I remember when I arrived here, um, Obviously, it was. I think it was end of May um, when I arrived here. It was sunny. It was. It was amazing when I arrived. Uh, so I, I kind of thought like, okay, that, that's a good sign because um, obviously people always think there's a there's a yeah very bad uh, weather here in England. No but idea when why. I, <laughs> no, when I arrived, it was really it was amazing. I got got to learn the got to uh, meet uh, uh, all the people and the stuff. So from day one, they were amazing and. Um, yeah, this is, eventually I signed for Norwich, and from day one, it's it's been just um, yeah enjoyable. And as a as a as a player, it was just um, yeah great to be part of it for four years. You were Daniel Farker's first overseas signing. Who actually approached you, and how did the move come to, come about? Um, that's actually a good question. <laughs> um, basically, it was both uh, Stuart Weber and. Daniel Farker and yeah, they obviously talked to my agent and then we, we got a chance to talk on the phone first. And yeah, pretty pretty soon, I think two or three days later, I uh, traveled to to, um, to Norwich, as I said. And yeah, this is, this is how it worked. I think three days later, I was back in Norwich uh, for the medical and uh, signed the contract. And you were at Darmstadt at the time. I hope I'm saying that right. Were you keen to leave at the time? Um, yeah, I was I was kind of um, open open for new things. Um, Norwich was my first um, yeah station abroad, so I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was very nervous to be honest. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons I, I came to Norwich was also to to get to know a new culture, new people, and um, yeah, I think eventually it worked worked out pretty well. And how does the culture in England compare to what you experienced in Germany? Yeah, I think the the people here in general they are very very nice, very kind, very polite. Um, in terms of the city, also just just amazing. Um, people support us. Um, yeah, just I just love it here. To be honest, yeah, that's really good to hear. So you had your first season here playing for Norwich in the Championship. How did you feel that went? There was a little bit of stick at the start. I know it was a little bit of a slow start, but how, how did you feel that you got off to life here in Norwich? Um, yeah, as I said, the start was pretty, pretty rough. Um, I think we'd, we had like in general, the, the whole club had a bit of a change. So certain things take time. And uh, this was also the case with me. Um, yeah, obviously you need to get used to it. Um, especially to the championship when you play all three, four days. And um, yeah, first season was rough, but the more time I went through, the better it got, I think. Did, did you feel like you were joining something that was about to change with the philosophy and the ethos? Stuart Webber's come in, Daniel Farker's come in. Were there conversations that helped bring you to the club around the ethos and what they were developing here at Norwich? Definitely. Um, I think, um, yeah, at that time Norwich got relegated the, se the season before. Um, yeah, that was obviously, it's always good to be part of some, how do you say, development or change, especially when it works out well. And this was also obviously one of the reasons uh, why, why I signed for Norwich to, to get this, yeah, maybe a little adventure, a little um, something new. And then you have the next season, 10 goals for you in that title winning campaign. Did you kind of feel that you had maybe something to prove at the time? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I was just enjoying enjoy playing. I think um, this time 
the preseason started um, yeah, pretty bad for me with, a in, with an injury. Then it took me a while to get back in the squad. And I remember um, after the first um, international break, I was back in the squad. And from this day on, we were, I don't know, winning 30 games in a row. It was just amazing. And um, yeah, mostly I came from the from the bench and I was just enjoying enjoy playing. Um, and yeah, we had a we had a great squad squad and obviously we had big plans to to achieve promotion. Yeah, where did that together and togetherness and unity come from then? Because you know, going up as champions two seasons ago, such mm. an impressive squad, brilliant performances. Where where did it all slot into place? Um, I think it's due to the recruitment. I think um, you don't just sign players; you also sign characters, obviously. Um, and um, I mean, certain things are obvious. The better character you are. Um, the, the bigger the toge togetherness and um, especially when it um, yeah doesn't go well you stick together also in this season two years ago when we got promoted I think the first six or seven games we were also struggling but then we we, we talked about it and yeah and then um, obviously yeah we, we had a we had a big and really good squad and when it goes well we, we never stopped we always kept going Absolutely. Is that something that's talked about among you as a team, the togetherness and, you know, the characters? You talk there about characters. Is that something that Farka talks to you guys a lot about or is it kind of ingrained before you arrive? How, how does that work? Because character does seem so crucial and drive and determination in this squad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> our manager talks a lot about it. Also, yeah. Don't know. Like sometimes for him, it's also hard to pick a yeah a squad, the first first eleven, first or is it yeah the, the the squad generally the traveling squad, and he always um, yeah tells us to don't know to be patient and to to think of the group. Sometimes it's hard, obviously, um, but yeah, eventually it's all about the group. Football is about the group, and um, yeah. Um, I think all in all we have really good characters and it just it just fits. When when can it be you said that it sometimes can be a little bit difficult. When can it be difficult and why? Um yeah, obviously when when the results are not great or when when yeah, when yourself when you're not performing or not even playing or I don't know, not 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 being in the squad. But then it's about yeah, <laughs> staying cool, staying patient, and um, just just to wait for the next chance, and then obviously to use it. Yeah, and Daniel Farker recently said that no one could influence the game when coming off the bench like you. Did you feel like that at times? The importance that was put into you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's kind of a nice compliment. I get it, but it's, it doesn't mean I'm not impacting the game when I'm starting. Um, obviously, um, yeah. I take that, but I would obviously prefer to start every game. Yeah, but sometimes it's not the case. So yeah, and then you need, yeah, you need to use the minutes. Then you get sometimes it's just five or ten minutes, obviously. Exactly, and and your importance can never be underestimated in everything you've achieved in your four years here. And Stuart Weber said that you have surpassed expectations. How good is that to hear? Oh, did he say that? I didn't know. <laughs> okay, so he didn't have lots of expectations. So. <laughs> no, 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 he did. He had no, big expectations, no, but you went even higher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's nice to hear, obviously. Um, I mean, eventually, I'm just doing my job as good as possible, and um, yeah, of course, it's 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 a very nice compliment. Uh, I think also what what he has achieved with this club is is amazing. And did you expect when coming into this season? that we would go on and be crowned champions so emphatically and, and seal promotion right back again to the Premier League? Um, to be honest, um, I obviously, I had a hope that um, the more, so yeah, that we obviously sell as less players as possible. So this group from last season and maybe from the season before sticks together, um, obviously stays together, sorry. Um, obviously then you have better chances because we are always, um, uh, I mean, used to play with each other. It's always a bit difficult when you sign too many new players. Um, and then, obviously, I think in August, end of August, um, yeah, we knew the group. And um, I had from there on, I knew um, with some special players who stayed at the club that we that we can 
um, yeah, get promoted again yeah, as champions even better. And on the topic of special special players, who has surprised you the most, say, this season in particular? Surprised? Um, okay, um, if I really need to pick one player, um, obviously it's um, Oliver Skip, to be honest, because um, I played against him in the Cup uh, last season when we won against Tottenham. I think he wasn't great to be honest. <laughs> no, just you kidding. Know he's um, gonna see this. <laughs> <laughs> no, hi Oli. <laughs> no, he, he he was he was he was um yeah he was a bit nervous. I think it was his, one of his first games. But this season he was he, he was just amazing. Honestly, like never injured, always always performing on a high level in this league is for him as a 19 year old player or 20. I'm not sure. Which it's just just amazing. So. I wouldn't say he surprised me, but yeah, he's been really amazing this season. Obviously, some some other guys as well, but he was yeah a surprise for me been. then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for answering that. And and what has changed the most in the four years that you've been here? I should think the the training ground and the facilities have come on leaps and bounds in that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely the the facilities. Um, not that it was not great before, but um, due to these four years we developed even there and um, um, to be honest apart from this mm, nothing nothing special so maybe just the facilities the rest was fine we still had Daniel Fark as a manager Stuart Weber as, as a sporting director and all the yeah maybe a few new players but that's it <laughs> and what is your relationship like with Daniel Farker it's been always good with him um, I think he's a very kind person. Um, sometimes he demands a lot from us as players, <laughs> especially on the training pitch. But yeah, the relationship was from day one, just just on top level. Do, do you like that pressure? Do you thrive off it? Obviously, we've seen you score some stunning goals and a lot of them towards the end of a match. Do you really thrive on having that pressure? Um, it was probably end of the games because I just came on, you know. So <laughs> yeah, than that, Mario. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I kind of it's it's funny actually. Um, I never think about it, but also like um, in Germany uh, a few years back, um, always in the big games, I was scoring goals or performing, yeah, pretty well. Um, I don't think about it. it just just happens. So maybe maybe I need the pressure, but um, yeah. But uh, there's no, no no special reason for that, to be honest. Just instinct, I guess. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but when I was doing some research on you, Mario, I noticed you've got a really interesting backstory to, to where you grew up. Now, not many people will know all the details about the war that you had to flee, but am I right in thinking you grew up in a city that bordered Bosnia and I'm gonna have to look here, Croatia to make sure I get it right. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's, that's right. Um, yeah. What was that like? Just tell us about that. Um, um, I was I was obviously a little baby, a little kid. However, um, I don't really remember many many things because uh, I moved to Germany when I was five years old. Um, but yeah, the stories from my parents, uh, the things they said about yeah, first uh, ex Yugoslavia, the country where uh, what it was before um, was just amazing, and then the war happened, and then obviously we flew to to Germany and yeah, I still have family in, in Bosnia. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't want to go into many details, but um, obviously, let's be honest, uh, there are certain things um, in life you don't want to, you don't want to witness. And um, yeah, so I just know it from stories as I, as I was pretty, pretty small. Sure. So you then settled in Germany as a refugee. How did you then get into football? Um, yeah, just basically playing playing on the street with with friends um and yeah no, nothing nothing special i think um in this times this is what all the little kids uh, had done so yeah so just playing on the street that's it then you join mines as a youth player is that right yeah that's right um this was actually um yeah Due to my brother, because he was he's four years older, he was also a 
big talent and he played for Eintracht Frankfurt, so one of the better teams in Germany. So, yeah, and um, we moved from Frankfurt to, to Mainz because of him more or less, uh, if it makes sense, because he was like 18 years old, he got, a, he got a contract, so the whole family moved over. And I was then, yeah, basically, I was 13 or 14 years old, can't remember. Um, it was just like, yeah, if you if you sign, my brother uh, means I have to go with, and yeah, it, it worked out well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it worked out well. So yeah, this 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 was the story behind behind uh, behind mine. Yeah. Was there ever a plan B for you, or was it always just football? Um, oh, to be honest, I mean. Let's be honest. Uh, every little kid uh, dreams about it. Um, I obviously sacrificed a lot uh, during during the, the yeah how do you say um, teeny time, um, um, and I had this big dream, and thank God I achieved it uh, when I was 17 years old. Yeah, absolutely. Am I right in thinking you worked under Jurgen Klopp as well? And he he said some nice things about you, didn't he? Especially when Norwich were promoted. Um, two seasons ago up into the Premier League. What's your relationship like with him? Do you still have contact at all? Yes, indeed. Um, I think two days ago his his son messaged me. So yeah, I used to play with his son as well. So he was my first senior um, senior coach at Mainz. So he was, yeah, he's one of my yeah biggest mentors, if you can say it. Um, I'm yeah very grateful to to know him and. Um, we are still in touch and with his son, so yeah. Well, that's interesting. And do you see similarities between, say, Jurgen Klopp and Daniel Farquhar? I know people are quite quick to make similarities because of because of you know being German, but, yeah. but do you see similarities <laughs> as well? Um, well, that's actually a good question. Um, um, obviously, yeah, in in certain ways, uh, let's say German characters are similar. They demand a lot. The discipline is, um, yeah, for the players should be very, very high. Um, the training sessions are with both uh, are very, very tough. And it's about these little details. I wouldn't say they have the same philosophy, but they go um, into many details, which are very important for their game and for their idea of playing. You just mentioned the word philosophy there. How would you describe the philosophy now at Norwich? Um, okay, um, it's a bit of everything, obviously, um, we, we have many young players, which I like, uh, the club is, um, is still on a, on a, obviously on a top level, um, the philosophy is just, I think it's, it's like a family club, if I can describe it like that, um, everyone does everything to, to achieve, um, the best in a, in a, in a, still in a very kind a nice way there's there's less how do you say maybe less pressured um here than to other clubs i don't know like that it it uh, speaks for itself because daniel fark has been the manager for four years i think that doesn't happen often especially nowadays um that means the club has his idea they stick to it and obviously it works out i think we play very nice football um, obviously possession based um and yeah, I think um, the supporters love it too. Oh, we really do. Uh, but why less pressure? Do you feel like the players feel that you can ju you can just kind of play with freedom? Um, maybe it's a wrong word, but less pressure maybe because um, I don't know everything like with the media and stuff. They, I, I don't feel like uh, we. So us as a player, we can focus on, on football, the only thing what matters. We can focus on the performance on the pitch. There's not not many, I don't know, bad, bad articles about certain players um, and all that stuff. This is what I mean with, with less pressure, like the media. I don't, I don't think they, they really, how to say, um, talk talk badly about us, So which is good. I think it helps us, yeah. And there is a lot of positivity, absolutely. And how proud do you feel to have played such a key role in help bringing that positivity? Um, yeah, obviously, I feel feel very proud. Um, also, uh, yeah, um, I mean, um, it's it's not always easy when 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 you are not um, when you are not playing. But 
I played my part um, and yeah, as I said before, to leave the club as, as, as a champion means, means a lot to me. Absolutely. And, and you turn 32 at the end of this month, still plenty of years left in those legs. What is next, <laughs> Mario Vrancic? Uh, no idea what's next. Um, um, yeah, holidays, <laughs> first, first of all, and then, then see, see what happens. I'm also like pretty excited about the next step. Are you looking further down the line to go into coaching at all, potentially? Um, yeah, I've been doing my coaching badges. Um, meanwhile, you have a B license. Yeah, it's yeah, maybe. Let's see. Uh, I think um, I could do it. Um, but yeah, depends. Let's see what the next years bring. Um, I want to first focus on on still playing football um, on the pitch and then maybe Besides that, doing, doing the UFR A license and all that stuff and see if it suits me or not. Hey, when that time comes with Farker and Klopp helping you out, you'll be in very, very good position. <laughs> and, and finally, Mario, what does Norwich City mean to you and what makes the club so special? Um, it's first of all, it means, um, yeah, home for me, to be honest. I felt from day one, obviously, I. My, it's my first season abroad, I didn't know what to expect, but as I said earlier, from day one, the people are, yeah, were just amazing to me and um, it feels like home and um, yeah, just, just, just amazing, amazing people, not just within the club, also out, outside of the club and they gave me a lot and there's always, um, yeah, I will never forget Norwich, obviously, um, only, only good things about Norwich, to be honest. And we will never forget you, Mario. Thank you so much for all of the memories, the standout moments. You have been incredible. All the best for whatever comes next. And thank you so much, Mario. Thank you.